Thank you for turning to page 121. Today we're going to take a look at Animal Encounters. This is from Supplement 2. I'll show the, the Little Black Book uh, 3 that shows the original Animal Encounters. We're going to take a look at Little Black Book Supplement 2. There's a reason I'm going to take a look at this. I have a lot of fond memories out of this book, uh, which is why I want to take a look at it by Game Designers Workshop, of course. Uh, this book was published in 1979. I didn't get into Traveler until March of 81. So actually, this is one of the earliest books that I had. And I'm, I'm going to explain some of my nostalgia for this particular book. We're going to take a look at how animals used to be dealt with and how they're dealt with now in a more modern way. So today on page 121, Supplement 2, Animal Encounters for Traveler. All right, the first thing I want to talk about comes out of the original box set of Traveler, published in 1977. And there you have my lovely battered copy of it. This guy has seen a lot of miles in my car going to and from games. And the book out of here that deals with it is Worlds and Adventures. And in this book, we got our first look at wildlife on a planet. One thing I always liked about Traveler, it really struck me when I first started reading Traveler, when I started playing it, and then I started reading it on my own, is that the animals fit their e ecological niche. In other words, they belong there. They're not just these fantastical monster beasts, uh, which Star, Star Wars is very famous for. Uh, these aren't beasts with powers that just shouldn't be there. Apex predators on a planet with three other apex predators, all in the same ecological niche. I liked that about Traveler. I still like that about Traveler. That's one of the things that keeps me coming back to Traveler, is that it makes sense. Now, some of these animals are rather fantastic, but that's also kind of the point. They are, quote, alien, unquote. So basically, Animal Encounters starts on page 28 and takes us through what the animals, what our procedure is going to be, how the animals would attack, and how they would do damage, and what they are. Are they flyers, swimmers, amphibians, triphibians? They live in land, sea, and air. And what their size is, how many hits it takes to knock them unconscious, and then subsequently kill them. And here we have all the necessary traveler charts. I'm not going to go into a ton on the actual mechanics of... Uh, original Traveler, much as I love Original Traveler, uh, I use it more for inspiration these days simply because a lot of the, the game mechanics have matured and uh, I find Mongoose Second to be the most mature form at the moment of Traveler out there and that's the edition I'm playing, but I can easily adapt anything out of here directly to that. So this tells us the definitions. Herbivore, Grazer, Intermittent. They don't devote their time uh, to eating, and then it gives us a real world, uh, they don't work full time to eat, and gives us a real world uh, example. Terran intermits, intermittents are chipmunks and elephants, so there you go. Filters, a filter uh, basically swims through uh, water in our case, and filters out its nutrients and lets them pass through its body, and uh, the barnacle would be a good example of that. Omnivores, of course, which technically humans are, Gatherers, hunters, eaters. Uh, it's an omnivore in the sense that it will eat anything and everything. Carnivores, it says itself. Pouncers, they, they attack by pouncing on prey from surprise. Chaser, they chase you down. Trappers, they set up some type of trap for you. A siren uses a, a Venus flytrap as a good example of a trapper, or of a, rather of a siren. Uh, killers, they kind of enjoy killing. They have the shark here as a killer. I don't know how accurate that would be now, but this book was written in 1977. Scavengers, Intimidators. Uh, intimidator, the example they give here is a coyote. Wolves, I think, would also be Intimidators. Hijackers, uh, they give a lion or the Tyrannosaurus Rex as Hijackers. Uh, carrion Eaters, uh, the Buzzard would be a good example. Also Hyenas. Reducers, which would be bacteria that uh, dissolves the food. So we got a lot of nice definitions of what they meant here. And then in each of the charts, we had a place for this type. And then it gave us examples of when they would attack, when they would run away, stuff like that. So I liked that, but this is pretty limited. It's only about five pages long. Uh, it's about eight pages total. So you kind of go, okay, well, it's a, the core rule books. They're, they're still going to give us something, and they did. 1979, they gave us Animal Encounters. And the reason this book has a special place in my heart 
is this was our monster manual. Like most people, I came from a D&D slash AD&D background into Traveler. My buddy came home from college with it on spring break one year in 81 and said, hey, I've got this cool game. Uh, we're going to go up and uh, to, into the uh, family into his family room and we're going to roll some characters and you're going to enjoy this. And what do you know? My first two or three characters died. Uh, very first introduction to Traveler. I laughed my tail off. I thought that was wonderful. So then when we started playing a little bit, we got Animal Encounters. And this becomes a monster manual. It's a well thought out book, but it is a monster manual. Interestingly, there's no real credit on this. At least in my copy. I don't see who wrote this. I imagine it's Mark Miller, but it doesn't say. So then we get them by world type. One picture. That's it for this book. There are no other pictures of our creatures. Our monsters have no pictures. And it gives us the terrain that they're in, and here are all the charts. So if I have a small world with a thin atmosphere, and my terrain is prairie, I would throw on this chart, and then I would end up with that. And here is what they would do. What do they look like? Well, that's up to you as the game master. Fortunately, I'm also a comic book fan. So what I would do is I would roll on this chart, I would find the monster, uh, sorry, creature, that I wanted, let's face it, we call the monsters, I would find it, and then I would go through my comic books, and I'd go, okay, this guy looks kind of like what I'd want. So my earliest days, probably the first 10 years I, I played role-playing games, I very often had a comic from my collection sitting near me, so I'd give a nice visual example of what there was. There was no internet, folks. We didn't have easy access to exotic-looking creatures and people posting up their excellent artwork for us to take a look at. It was what you could find in I always consider myself fortunate that I was a comic book fan. So the book goes on. There's a bunch of creatures brought in here, and there are also events. So here, uh, if you're in a marsh terrain, um, noxious fumes are noticeable in the area. If brief for any length of time, cause unconsciousness, respirators will avoid the effect. Here's a uh, quicksand. You know, here's an oasis. So you get the idea. So that's what these books were. And we were really excited. Uh, I was excited when I first encountered this. Because it felt a lot like the AD&D Monster Encounter charts. And I thought, hey, this is perfect. This gives me a way to flesh out Traveler very quickly. Now, once I had GM Traveler a little bit, I realized that you don't spend a ton of time on monsters. They're there, and your, your creatures are there. But they're not what they are in a fantasy role-playing game, where they're there to always oppose you. These are more incidental encounters to the side of your story. That being said, they can add a lot to your story. If somebody gets uh, stung by a poisonous whatever and is dying from it, and you've got to now deal with that, that can become an adventure all by itself. How are you going to get this person to aid and comfort? So then we keep going on, and I like that it's set up by different world sizes and the atmospheres, things like that. I'm not going to go through every single page of the book. I mostly just went to this book because of nostalgia. I was thinking about this book the other day, and I thought of how much fun we had out of this book. And I thought, yeah, I want to take a quick look at that. And I want to take a look at animal encounters in general. So here we have a book with a bunch of different encounters with unnamed creatures. Yes, you had to name them yourself also. Uh, and you had to come up with some kind of mental image for your players. Or in my case, I would just take a comic book that I thought had something that looked like it. And uh, I would put that on the table and, and we would go from there. Lead figure for these things? No, you didn't have one. Very often you just, just used a stand-in figure of some type. So I'm going to go through here. And then we have some encounter tables for maritime locations on the water. And Arctic locations. Again, feeling a lot like the AD&D monster encounter list. And now vacuum situations. So you get the idea of what the book did. And it tells you to look for Supplement 3, the Spinward Marches, for a set of 16 complete subsectors already generated and mapped out. Uh, this book contains 111 distinct animal encounters, so it's a way to expand your campaign. Supplement 3 was coming. It was at, that was an ad for it on the back of this book uh, because initially Traveler was system-free. There was no universe for Traveler. It was developed starting with the Spinward Marches and then going back toward the rest of the Imperium and all of Charted Space. So now we're going to take a look at something from one of the more modern books. In this case, it's going to be from a JTAS article. And it's going to give us a little more nuts and bolts on the, the creature encounter. All right, the first of the examples I'm using is a, a more modern version. 
uh, is from Journal of Traveler's Aid Society number one. I already took a look, comprehensive look at this book on the channel a few months ago. But here that we have the beast, Jerry, and they show us bush runners. And here is the actual background and ecology of the animal. And then its stats in game for Traveler Second. Mongoose Traveler Second, sorry. And then we get the Lazen, amphibious carnivores native to the planet Suav Suavanus. Uh, a world with high gravity, standard atmosphere. So you get the idea. These are, in this JTAS, for the most part, these are uh, refurbishments of older monster encounters or creatures or articles from the original JTAS. And it's not just a regurgitation, re reprint of the old stuff. It's updated and it, there's some clean new writing in it and things like that. So I really found these uh, refreshing. A ton of traveler. Uh, adventures over the years in every format have included beasts. So they've had beast areas. So there are just dozens and dozens to choose from now. But again, going back to this old guy in 1981, he was it. You really think book three was okay, but he was really it as far as chapter and verse of what you were actually going to be uh, putting on the table. I loved JTAS for fleshing these out for us. And uh, I really enjoyed what Mongoose is doing with the, the current uh, resurrection of some of these old monsters. There's a minifant. Why you would need one, I don't know, but there you go. It could be a mount. Uh, and the cr tree crack and the land squid. I've used him a couple of times. And then we get the tree lion, a seed spitter, and that's all that's in this issue. So you get my idea is now we don't have just a chart with you were rolling dice and saying, oh, he's a, a carnivore, he's a predator. Uh, you have actual write-up of the animal, a depiction of the animal, and then his stats in-game. So that's the maturation that I've really enjoyed, and I like that this is presented in Mongoose second edition rules, which, as I said, is the current rule edition I'm using for Traveler. So that's all I've got to say today for Animal Encounters. Uh, go ahead and, and put some comments about how you've used them in your game. They can be a ton of fun. Uh, the old, uh, you've been poisoned by the, the stinger of whatever, and now you've got to get to the to safety to get medical treatment. So now you've got to deviate from your, your path that you were, you know, looking for this or that. Uh, so you have problems that you have to overcome in that way. You could have the entryway to some forgotten ancient habitat, uh, is currently occupied by a pack of what would be wolves, but they, they are the space equivalent of wolves. So you have to deal with how you're going to deal with that particular problem. These can be used very well as obstructions uh, to keep your players from just being able to cruise through the wilderness easily. Uh, and you're not going to see a ton of animals in settled areas, although there are certainly rat and rat analogs that come to mind. So that's something you could also introduce if you wanted to. Of course, uh, disease carriers, things like that. Uh, you could have them aboard your ship. Uh, trouble with Tribbles comes to mind, a harmless animal that causes great problems because it multiplies when taken away from its predator-heavy environment, and it just multiplies unchecked and will soon just take up all your space. So there you have it, uh, Animal Encounters. Uh, hope you found this interesting. And if you did, please like and subscribe. As I said, still trying to grow the channel, still trying to grow the Patreon. If you have ideas for Patreon, please you know, politely comment. Things I might be able to do to, to get the Patreon moving a little better. And uh, my, to my current patrons, I want to say thank you. I am ever, ever appreciative. I'm just trying to attract more so I can upgrade some of my equipment. So that's it for today from page 121. Uh, thanks for your time, and I'll see you next time.